Well, we're talking about unit 19. Um, first thing in unit 19 is comparison of adverbs. So we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to talk about irregular comparison of adjectives. So we did comparison of adjectives way back in unit 17, mm -hmm. and um, they left out the most common adjectives, which are also less regular in their formation. So we're going to talk about those two phenomena. So the comparison of adverbs, just as you can say good, better, and best, so you can say well, better, and <laughs> best as adverbs, okay? He did it. He, he did the best. He did, he did better, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he did, he can't, you can't say more well, <laughs> right? Okay. There are some adjectives that have, are used as adverbs, and you can make comparatives of them um, using the same forms. And there are some adjectives in English, like justly, the, our first example, where you use more and most. So his, his uh, as a judge, more. The verdict was, uh, uh, no, all right, let's think of an example. <laughs> For? He acted justly, or she acted mm -hmm. justly. Uh, she acted more justly, and she acted most justly, OK? And notice that if you say more justly, you can say he, she acted more justly than her sister. Okay, and so you can have a comparative syntax with either the word for than, which is a, eh, which has an accent, or you can just put the, the comparing, the noun that's being compared to the first one, the second noun, in the genitive case, uh, without using the word for than. So those are constructions that we had before. So if we look at the forms of these, there are very consistent pattern in Greek. Most adverbs, although not all, um, in the positive degree end in omega sigma. We learned that already a while ago. So dikaios and heideos. There are some <coughs> adjectives whose adverbial form isn't in os. And in that case, what you use is the neuter accusative singular most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we say it's an accusative singular because even though the neuter nominative and the accusative singular are the same, but the Adverbial function is something that the accusative has, right? We've had adverbial accusatives, like accusative of respect is an adverbial accusative, and the, and the adverbial accusative in, in the degree of difference construction that we talked about a couple of lessons ago. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why the, the comparative degree of the adjective justly, or the adjectives justly and sweetly, is the neuter accusative singular, to kaioteron and hedion, for more sweetly, and then the superlative to distinguish it from the from the comparative degree uses the neuter plural accusative the kaiatata and hedista. It's just an oppositional phenomenon. Um, the 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 standard adverbial form being the neuter accusative singular. So the kaiatata falls into the same class, um, but it's distinct from the um, from the comparative form. But there are lots and lots of uh, adverbs that follow this pattern and. Uh, You'll see it often in real Greek. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the most common adjectives and their comparatives and superlatives. Belisi has put, these are on page 544 of the book. Um, there's a list, we're not going to talk about all of them, but these, these adjectives, you need to learn their comparatives and superlatives. In other words, you're going to see them in Greek from the get-go, so you might as well start learning them. But the, the most interesting, if you want, uh, are, are the two that we're looking at. The one that means good, agathos, uh, and the one that means bad, kakos, have, each have three comparative and superlatives, and the book is confused about the difference between the meaning of them. Um, we, we hope we've made it clear to you by now what, what kind of a situation is going on with such situations. We talked about, for example, the lion, the lioness, and, uh, and uh, how that works, the two forms of the triangular kind of, mark, of opposition between marked and unmarked forms. So if you have a triangle at the top of the triangle, you could put the word lion, which is opposed to lamb, which is either male or female. And then, and then uh, on the left you have the lion that's a male, as opposed to the lioness that's a female. Okay? So you have a three-part system, one on the top being unmarked, that's either masculine or feminine, and then one being feminine and the other masculine. In the case of agathos, that's what's going on with the three comparatives. Amenon is the unmarked one. That means better, 
and aristos means best in any way, okay? And, there, and that, those ways include the specific ways that the other two have. So beltion means better morally, and so amenon can also mean better morally. And kreto means better in the sense of stronger. It can mean physically stronger mm -hmm. or metaphorically stronger, but it has to do with, with uh, having more power, okay? So um, you can see that you, you've got a, a three-part system, and, and these forms, amenon, beltion, and, and kreton, they're all really from the ion, ion comparatives, although the iota is missing in some of them, for reasons that the book shows you. On page 545, the iota turned into a y in some places and then disappeared. So you've got uh, uh, the, all these so-called irregular comparatives are of the time a type ion istos. Um, so we just can't see the relationship anymore between the roots of Agathos, Amenon, and Aristos to say nothing of the other, the others which look similar. Kraton and Beltion and Beltistos, that's okay. Kraton and Kratistos are from the same root, but there have been transformations of them. So these are old words whose form is no longer morphologically transparent to the native speakers of us. Now if we look at at kakos, rather, the word for bad, we've got the same situation. Kakion and kakistos are the unmarked forms, and cheron means morally bad, and heton means weak, physically inferior. So kakion can mean, by itself, can mean both morally and physically inferior. Um, the, again, the comparative forms are in on or ion, the superlatives in istos. Um, in the case of hekistos, the occurrence of the adjectival form of superlative is rare in Greek, so the book gives you the adverbial superlative, hekista, um, because that's a much more common word. It means least of all is what it means most of the time. Um, and then Belisius well, put the positive and the um, comparative of a lot of oligos, that's got a, a word with a long I, which means a few, okay? Um, I'm going to mark the macron on the on the on yeah. the oligos. Oops, you got an S there. The other kind. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing that today? There you go. It doesn't bother me that much either. And then you just move everything there. So oligos means few. Okay. In other words, small in number. Okay. Alaton means fewer, and alakastos means fewest or or least. These are these are really common words for. Uh, you know, adjectives in Greek and the comparison of superlatives are, occur often enough. The other ones in the book are the words for big, megas, medzon, and megastos. The comparative and the superlative are the adjective polus that we had earlier. That me, they're pleon or pleon and pleistos. Um, the adjective, the, the comparative and superlative of tachus, the word for swift, which are thaton and tachistos. You've got a theta in that form because the in the other forms, there's a chi, and the original root is theta, alpha, chi. So one of the aspirated consonants has to become unaspirated. So when you have the comparative, the unaspirated consonant becomes a tau for other reasons. So the aspirated initial tau becomes, uh, it, it surfaces anyhow. And then there's radios, raon, and raistos. Um, word for easy. I don't think we have that yet, but mm. also a very common word. So those are, the best thing to do is to put them on flashcards and memorize them. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're hyper common words and knowing the comparatives and the superlatives, it's not predictable as it is for other Greek adjectives. Okay.